Hi everyone, it's Barry Carter here once again. I'm with Dara O'Kani, and um, we are looking at some real life hands that I have played in the last couple of weeks. Um, as you know, Dara and I have just written a book on GTO and normally what happens when we write books together is I play the format that we're writing about whilst we write the book and you can kind of see me improve. I didn't play a great deal of poker whilst writing this book. So I'm only really applying the lessons after we published the book. And today I wanted to look at some hands with Dara to see, um, first of all, if he agreed that I took a GTO line and probably more importantly, was I right to take the GTO line? Because I'm starting to see some spots, Dara, where um, I may, may have got the fundamentals wrong, but they don't seem appropriate for my game. So I, uh, I mean, I know you spoke to me about before about how you will usually play GTO against regs and, uh, you know, you tend to play very exploitative against, um, you know, the, the the fishy players. You know, how do we strike the right balance? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think, first of all, the, the, the most important one is exactly what you said there. You, 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 you want to only try to strive to play in inverted commas, perfect GTO against either players you believe are better than you or at least as good as you that you can't get an edge over or players you have no idea what they're doing. Um, um, but that said, even when you're playing exploitatively, you can still benefit from looking at the solver. Um, because first of all, GTO is also a baseline strategy. It's what what sort of uh, you should be adjusting from, as it were. You know, if you're against a calling station, you obviously should should be bluffing less, um, but you need to know what you should be bluffing against a normal player, and then you decide which of those bluffs um, you, you shouldn't be using against this player. If you use uh, if you're playing against a maniac, you should obviously be calling more, and you, you can use a solver by basically also looking at what their range should be. You know, if you bet, what should they fold? And if you go, well, I'm up against a calling station and there's no way he's folding half of these hands that he's supposed to fold, then you know immediately which direction uh, and what kind of um, deviation you should be making. Conversely, if you're up against somebody um, who, who who folds too much, you know, you might look and okay, well, if I bet this, he's supposed to call these hands, but there's no way he's calling king high. Um, so, so therefore I can get away with bluffing more. So that's kind of the way you should use solvers. Look at, look at the base on strategy, but look at what the other guy should be doing as well. Um, and then deciding, is that actually his strategy? And if it's not, how should I adjust? Excellent. Excellent. So we'll, we'll jump right in. Um, I've got 30 big blinds effective, uh, in his hand. Um, and, uh, King Queen suited, obviously a, a good hand to play from any position, um we've uh, we've got a defense from the big blind and he checks and um i'll just i'll run we'll run through the hand and we'll go we'll jump into gto wizard but um i normally try to balance betting and not betting when we have a very good flush draw and overcards in a spot like this however i chose i thought this was a great spot to check back because a three four six board um does not favor my range this is i, I don't have many five sevens i don't mean have many six fours or three sixes or three fours or anything like that but if the uh defending player is playing a, a wide balance defending range they probably should so i think this was a great spot to check back to protect my um uh check back range and lo and behold we hit the uh the nice card on the on a turn, and now he leads into us for a pretty big bet. Um, going with the same uh, thought process, I, I thought um, raising would only fold out the bluffs at this stage, uh, of which he should have plenty. Um, so I thought calling was the the best course of action. And then, and then this turn is pretty much a blank. Obviously, river random, five, random uh, river is a random uh, random fives get there, but. Um, uh, is a pretty good card for uh, us, uh, um, our range, sorry. And uh, this time he checks, and obviously we've got to go for value. Um, uh, this is where I felt like I probably deviated a bit away from GTO, which is uh, my inkling is that in GTO world, it would be a pretty big bet size here. It's kind of a, a polarized bet. You know, we've got a flusher, we we don't yeah, have it. And you're going to have the various spades a lot as well, I think. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, 
but I, I went for a smaller bet because I, this is where I, f- I felt I was deviating. I kind of felt that um, in real life games, people aren't going to be bluff catching um, these over bets at the right frequency. So I actually put, um, you know, a half. Okay, so before, be, before you move on from that, does, does that mean if you didn't have the flush, you would shove here? Because you think he's going to fold? Um, uh, no. Uh, I, well, Actually, yeah, I mean, I, I actually probably would do a, a big there's a sli- Like, there's a slight thing, like, sometimes people say, well, I bet small because I expect him to fold. Um, but then you say, okay, but then if you didn't have it, you'd bet big because you're expecting him to fold. I, maybe uh, not. I think I would probably... Actually, I think I'm, I think I'm capable of both the two. But when I say I'm capable of both the two, what I mean is I will do both of them without thinking about why I've done okay, it. Some of the time. Anyway, yeah, no, I just wanted to make the general point that like you can't have it both ways. You can't say that the guy is overfolding, and that's why I bet small when I have mm-hmm. it. Um, but then I wouldn't actually uh, man up and and shove if I didn't have it. If I just had like uh, what what kind of hand can get to the river like this? Well, if we had, yeah, I guess the barriers of spades. Mm. Yeah. But um, and then I um I put a bet out there and he he didn't go for it if I remember rightly. Okay, it looks like he's just betting. If he if he falls, he probably just had a pair on the. Oh no, he did he did he did he, did, he called. Sorry, okay, so you got a crowd call from the six. Yeah, so um, from, a, um, from a results perspective, it looks like he got a good result. But yeah. what, what we're more interested in is the GTO solution and your divergences and why. Yeah. So um, here we are. We uh so. Going uh, to the under the gun. No, I was the uh, look like Jack. Yeah, I'm looking at the reports there. That's why, why it's wrong. Um, so this is um, this is what the GTO betting range would be. Obviously, King Queen Suit is comfortably inside yeah, there. Yeah, obviously, uh, the big blinds defending range is pretty much everything except the the bottom end of stuff. Obviously, has all of this uh, low stuff that I said we should be scared about in his range. We we're not too concerned about him having over pairs and so on. Um, on a six four three board. Um, the big blind um, checks uh, 75% of the time, but there is quite a lot of lead in there, which um, corroborates what I was saying about this being his board rather than mine. Yeah, I think we've talked about that before. Basically, on on these low-card boards where straights are possible um, and the the defender has more or all of those straights that we don't have, like we just never have 7-5 here or 5-2. Um, whereas he has five two suited, seven five off, and seven five suited. So uh, even a e, e, even a, a normally very strong hand like an over pair um, actually goes down in value on this board. He also has a lot of hands in that region that are two pairs. Um, so so one pair hands in particular are are just not that good on this board, um, and therefore we're going to check behind a lot. So he should be leading. Yeah. Um, and then this is the first uh, potentially contentious. Um, sort of uh, this, uh, strategy here is uh, my decision to check back with the king queen suited so as you can see we actually check back 50 percent of the time uh even though we have got um uh, know, where, where do we see that you have to hover over king queen suited i think for us to oh no i, I was looking at the whole range you've got to think oh, the whole that. range oh yeah you've got to think in terms of the whole range there Dara. yeah yeah absolutely oh yeah well obviously you know for, for the same reason that he should be leading this is a board we should be checking a lot yeah um yeah, um, I can, uh, yeah, and you can see the hands that are checking a lot, uh, ace highs and king highs, are sort of like hands that really don't want to get check raised. Um, exactly, and uh, onto my actual hand, yeah. um, and uh, and as you can see, I, I kind of nailed it. Of all the hands that, um, it, it actually, of all the hands, it probably checks back at the uh, checks back at the purest of frequencies. Um, if, you, if, if you just go up to ace queen suited uh, very quickly and see what ace queen of spades does, he, yeah. So the, the 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 stronger flush draws are betting at a much higher frequency. Mm. Um, the, 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 there's two things going on here. The, the first thing is we we absolutely need to check back some flush draws mm. um, because if if we never check back a flush draw, then when we do check back and remember we're checking back almost half the time with our range then as happened in this hand when the flush gets there on the turn we just can't have the flush mm. um so with your flush draws you have to bet sometimes check sometimes so that they're in both ranges going forward the better ones to bet are the ace high flush draws because they're drawing to the nuts yeah um, so so they want the pot to be as big as possible when they hit um they, they, they they're also much happier to call it off 
if we uh, bet king queen suited here and got and got raised or shoved on um we we can happily call off with the ace high flush um, mm-hmm. because he can be shoving a worse flush draw but with mm-hmm. the king high flush we might we might be running into a sex of spades yeah yeah and, and then we're in terrible shape so that's why um i know I, and again like at the end of the day king even though it's a flush draw it is king high as well which has a decent amount of showdown against his range it might okay. win unimproved mm-hmm. so it's it, it, strong draws and very strong mid hands generally want to bet uh, weaker showdown hands and weaker draws generally want uh, to, uh, to, to just get to see the next streak uh, cheaper. And that's why uh, ace-queen is mostly betting. Ace-queen of spades is mostly betting. King-queen of spades is almost always checking. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, maybe if you go lower down. No, I was I was curious if the uh, the lower flush draws bet a little bit more just because uh, they get more benefits from folds, but that doesn't... They do, they do a bit, I think, if you look at them. Uh, like yeah, nine, nine eight suited does. Nine eight of spades in particular. Um, I, that that has some other backdoors going on. Back, yeah, backdoor straight draw, and you know, hitting hitting top pair with one of these hands might be good as well. So, yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, the turn is the jack of spades giving us the the flush in in real life. Um, this um, uh, still plenty of leading. Um, again, um, uh, like thirty three percent of the time from the big blind. Um, well, actually, he's leading at the, the, the smaller size even more. Uh, yeah, twenty percent of posh. Yeah, so he's leading about twenty five percent of the time for a small size. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, that's because he 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 actually does have a decent amount of flushes in his range. Um, mm-hmm. Because if you look at his defending range, you can see almost the everything above the diagonal is being defended. So he's defending a lot more suited stuff than unsuited stuff. So his yeah. range is weighted more towards. Uh, suited stuff and particularly when the when the ace or the king of the suit aren't on the board most of our flush draws will be ace high or king high yes, yes. Uh, um so so, so so that means we have a reasonable amount of flushes as well but i think as a percentage he probably has more flush draws on the flop mm-hmm. uh so yeah yeah um so it, first first question then for um for people that are relatively new to solvers um, our opponent bets small, uh, sorry, uh, in the solver, the most pr- prominent bet size in is small. In the in fact, it's pretty much the only bet size. Exactly. Um, in game, uh, my opponent bet very close to the 83% bet size in that we see here, which happens 3.4% of the time. Mm-hmm. Now, in the book, um, we very strongly advocate if it's, something happens less than 5% of the time, you can probably ignore it and round it up into the, uh, the other actions. But in... In in real life, that's what's happened. So, if you were studying, if you played the hand like this, and you were studying this hand, where would your focus now be going? Would you be looking at how it was played, which is a rarity uh, in the solver, or would you actually be taking more interest in the uh, the smaller bet sizing and uh, deviate from? Uh, I'd probably take more interest in the smaller bet size because I think he he will be betting the hands that he should be betting at a smaller size for this bigger size in in, in the misguided belief that he has to protect. Like mm. if you look at his specific hand, which was king six off, like that just yeah. never bets big. It either checks or it um or it bets small. And mm-hmm. and and the purpose of the small bet is really just like to get value from uh worse hands like a bear spade, yep, or or, or a worse pair, or to fold out some equity. Uh, mm-hmm. if we have a hand like uh king queen no spade, which we mm-hmm. which we now decide to, to fold. And the bigger bet really doesn't achieve much because um it will sort of it 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 will fold out largely the same hands, and it'll just mean we're we're in worse shape, and the pot's bigger, and we're out of position going to the river. So therefore, but but yeah, like uh, because because he's not supposed to do this with this hand, there's not really much point at in in looking at what we're supposed to do against an eighty three percent bet because that's just okay. not his range. His range okay. is act, his eighty three percent bet bet range is actually his small what his small bet range should be. Mm-hmm. Um, so, as an exploit, incidentally. If I had absolutely nothing here, I would seriously think about raising. Um, because I think this is a spot where a lot of players are taking a hand like a six and they're sort of like, oh, I think I have the best hand now I want to protect, but mm-hmm. it's not a very strong hand. And then when they get raised, they go like, oh, well, I only have a six. Yeah. Um, and, and, and I'm going to fold. So I, I think be, that that that's another problem with uh, with using the really big sizing. You, you make the guy, you give the guy a much bigger incentive to bluff because the pot's bigger. 
mm. um, particularly if you're going to end up folding the same percentage of the range. Whereas when you if you bet small and get raised, you can you can you can justifiably call with a hand like king six. Yeah. Um, but if you bet big and get raised, it's 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 a much easier spot. So well, uh, we'll go bet twenty percent then. And um, yeah. uh, so in game, I um, uh, okay. So there's a a variety of responses to the twenty percent bet. Obviously, we can we can do more things. Um, and um, yeah, incidentally, um, irrespective of the GTO solution, when he bets the big size, I would immediately switch to exploitative, which means that I will raise more as a bluff and I will call more when I have it. Yes, because I expect him to overfold to the raise, um, which I think he will have to because he's basically put himself into a bad spot where he's overcommitted with a weak hand and he doesn't want to put more chips in. Um, so he won't put more chips in uh, when we're behind. When we're, sorry, when we're ahead, if if uh, unless we just call. Mm. Mm. Um, so um, where should my attention be going now? Because I I'd pretty much set that hand up to just show you that I played it exactly as the solver would have. But uh, yeah, okay, um, well, just, just just look at what King Queen would would normally do. See, yeah, King, Queen, yeah. Queen, Queen, King Queen mixes lots of stuff here, but it mostly just calls. Yeah. Um, and uh, given what I said exploitatively about his opponent, he's used the wrong size and his range is too weak for that size. Um, I would I I I would flick that over to always call. Yeah. yeah as an exploit. Yeah, which is um, which is precisely what I did. Um, so let's let's call it, and then, um, oh, what was the what was the river? It was uh, river oh, it was, made a straight. So. It was a two. It was a two of hearts. I remember. Yeah. And uh, now he's um, yeah, like he should go polar now because he has look look at all the five x he has. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like, and we have very little five x. Mm -hmm. Um, and he's also got a lot of flushes, obviously. Um, yeah, he's obviously got he's got his existing flushes, but most of, most of his bluffs on the turn uh, are probably either the bare ace of spades or a five. Yeah, yeah. Or um, or, or like hands like this, uh, like king seven off. I bet king seven off with with a spade is a uh, is a good bluff for him because obviously he blocks the straight and he blocks the uh, the flush. That's a that's a good card, but. Um, but yeah, again, like I, I um, what he actually did in game was uh, was to check. So once again, where should my yeah, there's, there's, like there's not much to checking his range because if you think about the way his range is supposed to be, uh, like he's either supposed to have something that he was sort of like blocker betting on, the, kind of blocker betting on the turn, mm. uh, and he still has that something which you can kind of bet small with again and and, and possibly get value from the same hands uh, that were behind on the turn. Um, so you can see actually there's a deep there, 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 there's some tiny betting here, uh twelve percent of pot, mm. uh, which is which is an interesting concept. It's basically when you know you ha you have the best hand a lot of the time, um, but your opponent has uh, has a pretty weak range. So you just use this guy's and he cycles with his weak hands that are worse than yours. Yeah, yeah. Um, and 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 if he falls to your bluffs, it's amazing because you've got you're getting eight to one on the bluff. Um, so so basically his range is mostly constructed around either that or the overbet. Mm -hmm. There's nothing there's nothing in between because the in-between bets don't achieve anything. No, um, they should be check calls usually. Yeah. 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 Um, and then obviously in you know, in game he checked, and then we're not gonna not bet the second best possible flush draw. Um so um we and if you it, it it puts this into all the sizes, it looks like. Yeah. Yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, this is a really strong hand, so you kind of want to b balance all the. Um, you you want to have it in your big bet and your small bet range, I guess, right? Darius? Yeah. Well, you can see. Well, there's actually no small betting in our range. Uh, the smallest bet size used is sixty-two percent, if I'm reading that correctly. Uh, sixty-two eighty-eight. Yeah, like yeah. again, there's no, I, I, and and that's generally the case in position uh, on the river. It's 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 rare that a size. Uh, less than than sixty percent is used all that much mm. um, because it, you're basically just trying to target his his his, his hands are going to have to call and his he's not going to have too much more calls to a third pot size than he will to two thirds. So if you have a hand that's strong enough to bet, you might as well go for typically two thirds at least. Yeah. Um, we obviously have some five x which has improved to a straight, and we had our our our, our existing flushes um, and. Uh, and I, I, and we have a reasonable amount of bluffs uh, we can pick from as well. So um, 
yeah, it makes sense to use the two thirds. In in game, you use which size? I went half pot. So half pot. Yeah, that's reasonable. Yeah, I probably would go a little bit bigger. I think most people will call will side call up to two thirds pot. Once you go past two thirds pot, people kind of tend to think, oh, that's a big bet. Mm. But actually, just just bet the two the two thirds pot and um, or sixty two percent and see what he's supposed to call. Um, well, obviously, he's not supposed to have king six off, um, but like he's supposed to call king three some of the time. Mm. King two, so King six he's definitely calling as well. Uh, he's calling all of his Jack X. Mm. Um, he's even calling stuff like Ace three as well. Like so, he's supposed to call all this stuff. Uh, mm. Whether he doesn't practice or not, again, that's still a question you have to ask yourself. But then, okay. like I think people tend not to fold pairs in these spots anyway. So, no, I well, I don't think anyone's. A lot of players are not folding pocket sevens or above just because. It's yeah, still, but, a, okay. but, but but by a pair, I mean they won't even fold ace two. Like, well, yeah, they, yeah, yeah. If they get to the river with say, say they bet ace two with the ace of spades on the turn as a as a bluff, and now they hit their two and they check and they bet they just kind of go, oh, well, there's missed draws, I guess, so I call. So, mm. so I think a good general overall strategy is, is just bet two thirds pot in, in on, on the river and 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 get the side calls from all those hands. Yeah, yeah. Oh, good. That was that was a good start. And let's uh, let's jump into another hand. Um, uh, can't quite remember which one this is, isn't it? Oh, okay. This this is an interesting hand. Um, uh, so we are uh, we're about to be thirty big blinds effective, um, and um, I I am going to defend here. Um, if my hand was a little bit more, um, if it was ace five, if it was suited, I I'd actually like to you know um, shove in a spot like this. But um, I'm not folding ace high, and obviously we get a a pretty good flop here. I check to him because he's uh, he's supposed to have more king jack, um, queen ten with a club, uh, G king eight jack eight, all, all those supposed he's supposed to have all those hands. Yeah, I I I, I think you almost never see leading from the big blind on 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 monotone boards anyway. Um, as 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 I keep re repeating at infinitum, it's generally low card boards where straights are possible. Um, and actually, even on those low card boards where straights are possible, but if the board comes monotone, that actually depresses the um, the leading frequency as well. Because the crucial point about the, the the low card board where straights are possible is that the big blind has the strongest hands more often, the straights. Mm -hmm. But when a flush is possible, it flip it, it, it flip it flips it back. Now even the straight is not the strongest hand possible anymore. So I think I'm going to yeah I'm, I think I've got a, a small lead out here I am um, I I'm assuming my opponent has nothing because he didn't bet I have got back to I've got equity with my flush draw and I thought the jack was a good card for me um, because um, it's the sort of hand I would be uh, trying to just check call and get down to uh, to showdown with um, he. Um, uh, I think in those, I think in those spots when 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 the big blind checks or sorry the button checks in practice the 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 river bet will uh, the turn bet will almost never get through um, because I think if they had absolutely nothing they might just fire out a bet on the flop as a bluff so often the check back range is sort of condensed to something mm -hmm. that they kind of want to get to showdown with but they don't want to put more money in with um, mm -hmm. but I but I still I still think the turn bet has merit for other reasons well. Um... Um, and, and then this sets up what I um, I was conflicted about doing this in game. Uh, I knew I was filming, so that that might have had a um, a bearing on it. But um, I I blocked the nut flush, and uh, on a non paired board, um, I I think this was is this is a good spot to go for a very ballsy kind of bluff. Yeah. Um, the board is paired, which makes my um, nut flush that I'm supposed to be blocking a little bit less strong. Uh, but I I went I went for it anyway, um, and um, if this was an unpaired board, I know this is this is a pretty good bluff in in any situation. Uh, so I'm curious before we hit the solvers, like do do you think that sort of bluff is um, invalidated when the board is paired um i think I, I i i don't worry too much about the board pairing when it's button against blind right. um because because pairs pairs make up a tiny part of the buttons range yeah um, so the chance that he's flopped a set are, are gone way down um you could have jack a king uh king jack get, it, yeah sure but again they're they're just a tiny part of the range mm. uh, compared to his overall 50 percent range or whatever it is whereas if he's come from earlier position uh then 
King Jack, Kings and Jacks and Eights are all a, big, a much bigger chunk of his range. So um, once again, let's, uh, let's see what GTO Wizard has got to say for it. So first of all, his button raising range is tremendously wide. It's, uh, yeah, that's, like, every, that's every, almost 50% of hands. Like that's what I say. Like if you look at that range, like how much of that range is actually uh, boats by the river? Uh, it's it's only a tiny f a fraction, you know. Jack eight suited, Jack eight off, King Jack, King eight suited, King eight off, and the pairs. Yeah. Um, but then he has all the other stuff. Um, and then uh, my defending range. Uh, I was curious if a six off was was pretty much. Yeah, it's yeah. sometimes. Yeah, you can you can you can see that the 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 hands we want to shove are the the stronger hands, which you know can actually be ahead when they're called. And the weaker hands that will have more equity than a six off when they're called because they can make a a, a straight. Um, it's it's all the wheel aces, yeah, yeah that are being used. Um, I'm pretty certain it's like a hundred percent check on that. Yeah, and then yeah. so um, let's look at his checking frequency. Um, so it's thirty two percent. Thirty two percent. I think in practice players check more on these boards because uh, they get they get a bit scared. Like yeah. if we look at the hands he's supposed to bet. Um, like he's supposed to bet kind of a bit of everything. Um, like, do people really bet all those hands in practice? Uh, I very much suspect not. No, pe people aren't really betting pocket fours in this spot. Like, even like even if they've got a four of clubs, they're not betting pocket fours in a spot. Yeah. Like usually, I think even even stuff like a weak king, people will probably check more often than they should as well. Mm, yeah, it's um, yeah. I mean, like. Uh, even that people are just assuming uh, at this point, people just naturally kind of go to this mental place where they assume that you've got queen 10 with a club at least, you know? So even if you've, um, even if you've not got the best hand right now, you've just got ridiculous equity and they just want to shut down. Um, yeah. So um, uh, again, so he, so he checked, so let's, uh, let's, let's play it as it, um, uh, as it went. So he checks as well. Um the turn pairs board. Uh, I've got the jack. Um, that there is some leading out on this in the spot. Let's see if my hand. Oh, my hand actually gets in there. That's, well, but uh, but yeah. What, uh, just summarize, just, summarize, just summarize this lead out range, please. Let me down. And it's uh, yep. Uh, yeah, there's a uh, there is some leading, but we're not using the small size. Uh, no. you know. Um, and that's kind of because like if we have a very strong value hand like a flush, we want to start uh, pumping money into the pot now. Like remember, this is one of the key points we talk about in the book. Your value range determines your action. Mm -hmm. Think about what your value hands want to do. If you're sitting there with a flush, you want to start putting money into the pot now. If you're sitting there mm -hmm. with a jack, you want to put a lot of money into the pot now. You don't want him to get to the river cheaply. Mm -hmm. So there, so, 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 so there's not much merit in the um, in the small bet at all in this spot. If, no. if you are going to bet, you want to bet big. Um, with with your value hands, which uh, want to get money into the pot now while they're good, and then with your appropriate bluffs. Um, do you want to do you want to go with what I bet, or do you want to go with the the most common bet sizing, which is about eighty three percent here? Should we do Should we do uh, that? Uh, oh, that's a good question. Uh, I actually just hover over your hand, like maybe your hand does a small amount of small betting. Uh, a six of. Uh, yeah, it does. Um, it does a small amount of small betting. Yeah. Uh, in, interesting difference between the diamond and the other two. I guess it's the diamond on board is, it, is blocking some of his stuff. But I guess it, yeah, I guess that's blocking like ace jack of diamonds or something like that. So um, yeah. Or or jack six of diamonds, I guess. Uh, yeah. Which is probably opening. Okay. So um, yeah, this is. I think you. I think we could actually go both ways, uh, given that it is a legitimate play to to, to to bet small with the ace of clubs, although a very low frequency play. Let's see first of all what what you should do uh, when that plays out, and then we'll come back and look at if you, if you put that into your big bet range. But again, like that hand's not supposed to be in your big bet range very much anyway. So um, yeah. So he he calls and uh, it was a. Um... What was the hand? It was a five of diamonds. Five of five of spades. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. So now, yeah, now we are mostly using uh, the smaller size. Mm. Uh, okay. 
Okay, I need to think of. Yeah, it's a confusing spot because it because the 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 the, the, the turn bet is difficult to explain. Like overall, our range should be betting big. So when we bet small, what does that mean? It probably means we have a weak range where we're trying to get to showdown with. So, mm-hmm. so therefore, it makes sense to bet small again and get and get value from the same hands that are weak. Yeah. It, it's going to be more interesting to look at what we should do if we had bet uh, the bigger size that we sh- we should probably. Oh, well, let, let's let's jump to that then. Let's, yeah, um, so let's jump to that. So um, and then let's just assume that they um, call. Let's just buy the spades. Spades again. Yeah, you can see this is a different situation now. Now we're going polar. Um, mm-hmm. uh, because again, like our that's what our value wants to our value on the turn wants to go big, um, and, and therefore we still have that very strong value going to the river, which wants to bet big again, uh, to extract maximum value. So mm. that's what our range wants to do. It, it, it's a confusing spot when we bet small on the turn. Like in practice, that would be very difficult to implement because mostly you want to bet big, and then you have a few hands that want to bet small, and you're going to have to balance those two ranges. And then when you get to the turn in, in the uh, when you get to the river in the in the small bet turn line, it's kind of tricky to work out. Whereas it's much easier to work out. Well, what would I be doing if I actually had a big hand here? If I had mm. a flush, or if I had a house, and and the answer is fairly clear. I would, I would bet the turn big, and I would shove the river. Um, so that's kind of what our range wants to do. And I imagine with the ace of clubs, uh, we're going to be doing a lot of that. Um, yeah. yeah. One of them, yeah, one of them is check. One, yeah, again, we're we're, we're balancing because, like, we do have a, we we have a we have a small amount of showdown with the with the ace high. So you know, typically, this hand makes a good check, a potential check raise bluff too. A check raise, a good check raise bluff on the river, is a hand which can win a showdown. Um, but if he bets, um, is, is not going to win now. But but actually has blockers to very strong hands. Um, okay. So so let's look what happened if we check, which is of course what happened in game. Yep. And then he's uh okay, yeah, so he's, he's mostly using his 89%, uh, which kind of makes sense. He's basically got like a strong uh, a, a strongish hand. Um and he wants to get value from our one pair hands. And then what are we doing with this six? We're uh, actually we, we into, so I, I guess we're just over bluffing. I wonder, I wonder if that's because it's too big to um too big a bet for us to to realistically. Well, let's look at the as the bluffs we're actually supposed to use. So if you go back to uh, Besh, what he does, what he's supposed to do, bet eighty nine. Uh, yeah. And just look at our. Uh, do we have any bluffs at all? Yeah, we turn seven five into a bluff, mm. and six five. Just hover over the seven five and six five. Seven five in particular, yeah. So it, it, if we have, we we turn into a bluff sometimes, not, not all that often, to be honest. Uh, mm-hmm. Actually, six five suited is that just the flush? Check check the the six five suited oh, type. Six, five suited. Yeah, they're just the flushes. Yeah, we don't we don't have too many bluffs here, but but it it looks like we 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 want to be blocking flushes and boats and have and actually have less showdown than our ace high as well. Uh, oh, I th- I think the lesson I've I, I've got from this one is that in in a spot like this, I I already I obviously understand that blocking the nuts means that you can take more liberties with a bluff, you can do something a bit more adventurous. However, because I bet small on the turn. I kind of um, defined his range as being weak showdown type hands, um, uh, because obviously they anything anything sort of that was in the trips flush, um, you know, uh, boat category would have uh, would have raised me on the turn right. So I think um, by um, betting small on the turn, I kind of capped what he uh, would have on the on the river. Um, yeah, if, if you go back to GTO Wizards for a minute, let's let, let, let's step back and look what we're supposed to do if if we have bet small on the turn, uh, uh, whichever size you used, um, and he's called. Uh, uh, bet small on turn. Yeah, you've still got check on turn there. No, did I? No, I didn't. Oh no, no, you've got it. No, sorry, you've got it right. Yeah. Okay. So you bet small on turn, he calls rivers five spades. Um now just look at what A6 off is doing first. 
yeah so 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 it is checking some of the time because it has showdown um mm -hmm. so it checks and and then he bets and see what we do oh no we still don't, we still don't. It's, it's it's still never bluffing so it's just and this spot is interesting to look at what his bluffs are um uh it's uh well, what, so what are the raises here um 10 7 10 7 suited and well that's probably just the flush though mm -hmm. um, oh no no, no. this is a, yeah look uh, at the trash hands that he that he's raising can, can we do that yep um oh sorry just a second yeah so the trash hands he's raising is um 10 9 suited 10 7 suited um and that would be oh no it's 10 7. no no they're, they're, oh, it's, when, it's when it's when it's a flush sorry um no it's, it's seven five off it's six five off it's it's those oh no yeah it's, I think and, it, and it's just using them at a low frequency yeah yeah very low uh, five five three off yeah um yeah it's 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 and, and presumably those hands all have a club in them yeah they all have a club yeah, yeah so he's so he's blocking flushes and boats basically and yeah he's turning some pairs into bluffs it, yeah the, the the problem is if we turn all of our bare asex into a bluff here we're just going to fire too many bluffs like we we actually don't have that much value anyway uh that right, plays right. Anyway. most of our value will lead out on the river um so it's very easy to end up over blocking here which is essentially what happened regs and uh, you know you tend to play very exploitative against um you know the, the the fishy players you know how do we strike the right balance yeah yeah uh, maybe first of all you might want to share your screen so that, uh, oh shit picked up 